Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Xylitar by Bezier Games. This is a three to five player trick taking game with a two player special rule variant. And in the game Xylitar, you are going to have a hand of cards. These cards are gonna be face down on the table with relative of the different types of colors as well as their number variation. And you'll have an idea where you're trying to play down tricks. You'll play a card from your area into the main area of the table and each player will do the same thing following a set rule structure. And basically, whoever has the highest valued card of the main color is the winner. However, there's also a trump card, and depending on the number of players, will determine what color that trump color is, and that card will typically win the, the trick instead. Now, of course, it all has to do with making sure that you get the most tricks. So every time you play out a card, everybody else will. If you win, that'll be one point for you. But additionally in the game, there is a bidding aspect, and you're only going to bid one time per round of the three rounds of the game. And if you bid correctly on the number of tricks you think you're going to win, and you actually do get those tricks, then you're going to score a bonus five points. Whoever has the most points after three rounds is the winner. All right, let's talk about how to set the game up, how to play, and of course, my review. Setting up the game Xylitar is similar to any other trick-taking game, but there are a few differences. The first thing is you'll get the deck of cards from the box, and you'll set aside the high note cards. Depending on the number of players playing the game, you're gonna give each player one of these guys. This will give you an idea of the different suits and their number variation. Set that to your left. Then, after the cards are shuffled, you're gonna deal out a card to each player until all of the cards have been removed from the deck and they end up in somebody's hand. Then, a player across from you is going to organize your cards so that you do not know what's in your hand, so do not look at them. After they have organized it from highest to lowest, going from left to right, each player is then going to take their cards that were organized by somebody else and place them down, uh, forming kind of a square around the game board. So as you can see with my area here, I have my high note, and then I'm going to have my highest card face down, which I do not know what it is, but I do know the range and the color, all the way down to my lowest card. And as you can see, this is a four player game, so in which case I would take a look at his deck and organize it, he would take a look at mine, she would organize hers and she would organize hers. If you're playing a two-player game, it works the same way, except your opponent will look at your deck and the deck to their left, and you will look at your opponent deck and the deck to their left, creating this grid here. Once this board has been set up just like this, then you're ready to go with the player who starts being the person left of the dealer. Playing the game is quite simple as well. This is a trick-taking game, which means that if you're the starting player, you're going to select any of your cards. There's an exception though, you must never select the card to the right of your high note, so never your highest card when starting off a trick. You'll take one of those cards, you'll flip it over and place it face up in the middle of the table. From there, the next player in turn order will select one of their cards. And there are a few rules to this. A. If they have the color of the trick that you played, they must play that color, but they can choose any one. If they do not have the color of the trick that you played, they may play any color. If they choose, they can use a card that has the trump value. In a four player and a two player game, the trump value is red. The trump value is always going to beat out the main value of whatever you play. But if they just simply take one of their other cards and play it face up, then they're done. This player here can select any of theirs and flip it face up, and the last player can select one of theirs. Now, if you have the color, you must play it, otherwise you can play any color or the trump. If you play any color, that card is basically a dud. You're never gonna win a trick unless it is the card of the value that was placed out first and it was higher, or if it was the red trump suit and it's higher than any other red trump suit on the field. When the field is done, and just as you see here, you're going to then determine who has the highest value. In this case, they're all four greens and this is a seven. That means that this player is going to end up winning the trick. He'll take all of these cards here and this will be considered as one point at the end of the game. Make sure that whenever you win a trick, you'll go ahead and place them down and you'll kind of side to side them so that you know how many tricks you've won. The player who won the trick is going to be the next player who starts the next trick. They'll take any of their cards and they'll play it face up on the table, in which case everybody else will have to play. In this case here, I don't have a purple card as you can see. So I could play a blue card if I wanted to, to guarantee that I lose the trick, or I can try and play a red in hopes of winning with the trump. I've got a red two, which is better than his purple two because it's the trump suit. This player here does not have a purple as well, so they can go ahead and choose to play a card, and they're gonna choose to play a trump as well. And they have a trump three, which means that they're now beating me even though I played a trump because their trump is higher. So the next player 
that has, has, a, has a purple card, sadly, and must play it. So they're gonna play a lower card to guarantee that they don't lose too much value for later tricks. All cards are out, the highest trump is gonna win, which is the three here, and they're going to score. And it'll keep going like that up until the end where there's no cards left. There is one other rule. There is a bidding aspect to this game. After you go ahead and place out one of your cards, you can go ahead and decide to, to take a card from opposite, either opposite end of that card to place as your bid. So if I wanted to play this card out, I can then select one of the two cards that are adjacent and flip it over. And that is gonna be my bid for the round. This says it's a four, which means that I have to win exactly four tricks. And if I do at the end of this round, I'll get five more points, which is a total of five extra tricks you can win. So even if you think you might be able to win five or even six tricks when you have a bit of four, it's still better to try and win four because you can get five more bonus points. And each player can do so. Remember, it still follows all the main rules, except for when it comes to bidding. If you only have two cards left, you must play out one first and the last one is going to be your bid. And that will be the round. You'll just continue going through until all the cards have been played out and all the tricks have won. You'll check to see how many tricks each player has and calculate that as your score. In addition to your bid, did you match it with the tricks you won? And if so, you get a bonus five. Rinse and repeat this for two more rounds, setting all the cards aside and once again setting the game up. And whoever has the most points after three rounds is the winner of Xylitar. Yep, that's how you play. Okay, so Xylitar is a trick-taking game in its front and foremost. And for the most of you guys that have played a trick-taking game before, this one will come to no surprise to you. It's not something that's gonna be too complex or too different from other trick-taking games, with a few exceptions. The first one is that you are going to set up your opponent's decks. So you're gonna see the person across from you and get a good idea of what they have and what they're going to be able to play. You'll remember if they don't have a zero or if they have three tens or if they only have two twos. And so as you kind of collectively play your cards down, you can not only remember what cards people have as far as what they can play for their tricks, but also what your opponent across from you has and how high that number is, which can benefit you in the game. Another bonus to the game is you do not know what your hand is, right? But you do know what colors they are and you know the range and you have a good idea of the number because it's going to be organized from lowest to highest and the highest is 10. And each of these different colors has a different range. So if you know that if you're playing with a blue card here, this card's probably gonna be low because it's on my far right and it's a zero to five range. And in case you didn't know, it is a one, so it can be very low. Whereas a blue card over here that's closer to my high note from this player here is probably gonna be like a three, maybe a four. Oh, it's even higher, it's a five. And so you don't exactly know what cards you have necessarily, but you have a good idea of the range when you play them to try and win tricks. The other thing to do with this game is it's not necessarily just about winning tricks. You need to win your bid. That's the first thing, the first and foremost thing, because just realize that if you win, let's just say that you win four tricks here, that's pretty good, right? But, in, or, and let's say that your, your bid is four, that's an extra nine. Now, in order to match that, so let's say that I went over and I ended up getting one more trick, in order to catch up, I'll need to win four more tricks, which shows you how likely you are to actually win the game if you do not work on tr trying to make sure that you bid based on how many tricks you think you can win in order to score points. Another cool thing with this game here is that you, if you do not think you can actually hit your bid, if you flip over a card and you're like, ah, oh, it's a two, I already have three tricks, now your goal becomes something completely different for this specific round. You're no longer probably trying to win tricks, but you're trying to make sure that your opponents do not hit their bid goal, because if they do, they're going to slide way ahead of you for the next round. So you'll focus on playing certain cards in certain orders to guarantee victory for maybe somebody else, or making sure that at least the victories where they go do not end up going to the player who needs to get the trick the most. And so there's this kind of back and forth thing. There's a little bit of deception. There's a little bit of non like un unknowable things and how you have to try and trace things back to what other players are playing, what they know you have based on how they play, and what you know that they have. Yes, it's a trick-taking game. It has some unique little qualities to it that are really nice, and I really do enjoy these type of trick-taking games. Uh, it's a solid all-around game that has a unique feel to it and still plays like any other trick-taking game you've played before. The basic idea of playing tricks is very similar. It's whatever card you played for the first player is gonna be the main one. However, that one might not win because somebody might play a trump, but you do know exactly what players have as far as colors go. So if you have only, if you're the only one that has a green one, you play a green out, you're guaranteed to win unless somebody plays a trump. And so there's this cool little aspect to Xylitar that's actually quite different from other trick-taking games while seemingly being very, very similar in how to play the game. Negatives I have for Xylitar, and there's only mainly one. 
The main issue I have with Xylitar is this game is like unfortunately large. Uh, and by that I mean that it is a small box game, but in order to kind of uh, be able to play this game, you're gonna need a bigger table space because you are supposed to, in the rules, you're supposed to set these cards aside and go uh, make sure that you can see them all. And it sh should look like a Xylitar, which is kind of like a keyboard. And so when you're playing a four player game, this table space can end up being like this wide and all the way down. I would not even be able to fit this in frame just based on how these cards are laid out. That being said, the big table space is only the slightest problem, and the main problem is the setup. The setup is quite a bit of time. Remember that you're going to have to deal out all cards to all players, and usually in a trick-taking game you just simply start playing after that, dropping down tricks, and other players will play their tricks. In this game here, you're going to have to organize your cards, uh, or your opponent's cards, so that they don't know, and make sure that they're put in a certain order, and it's always high note to the left, and then the highest all the way down to the lowest, and you can't make any mistakes there, otherwise it can screw up the idea of how the game is supposed to go. And so, the setup can be longer than I would like for a trick-taking game. It's not a really long setup per se, maybe it takes like four to five minutes, but it's just seemingly longer than I've ever played another trick-taking game before. That being said, those are my probably only two small gripes about the game, is it's a bigger table space and it's a longer setup than I'm used to for most trick-taking games. But it seemingly is worth it because it has a unique aspect to it of kind of deduction and bluffing and it has this idea of a bidding system, which is all nice and condensed into a small box game from Bezier. I like this game, it's a solid game experience, and if you don't mind the few qualms I have with it, then this is something I definitely suggest you take a look at. For you Hearts fans out there that just don't mind a table space, take, take a look at Xylitar. It's, it's really cool. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board, or in this case, card game review, Xylitar. If you're looking to buy the game, there's a link down below in the description, and it's also on Bezier website, maybe an affiliated link, whatever I can find. And of course, if you would like, if you think we've earned it, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. Maybe you've watched one or even two of our videos before in the past. Maybe it's worth taking a look at the rest of the videos that we have in the future. We do greatly appreciate it, even if you don't have the notification button, just to show that you guys are interested in watching the videos to keep making us wanna put out more videos. We're coming on 10 years for the channel, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have. And thank you so much. We have a live stream at 6.30 p.m. PST on a Sunday, which we play games just like this one here all the time. And of course, we have a whatnot stream. It's also the same time, but on Wednesday and our website, Instagram. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to playing the Xylitar with a polar bear with you next time. Yeah, if you read the, the story for this game, it is really bizarre. I mean, it's cool, but it's really weird. Okay, super secret how to do the two player variants. I didn't discuss it. What happens is you set it up just like a four player game, and then the players on the sides are set up, set up just like you would do with, uh, I would look at this one and I would do this one and vice versa. And then the, the computer players will take their middle eighth card and that will be their bid. And they just set that aside. And then as you do tricks, the players, the, the computers are gonna go in clockwise order and are just gonna play the card on the farthest right side that is legal. So if it is a legal card, whether it's a trump, a card that is not a trump, or the main card, that is what is played. And it will just go around just like that. And additionally, if the Trump, if the, if the, if the computer players both win like this uh, with their with their Trump here, then the other players uh, have some devastating penalty. I mean, it basically plays like a four player game with two PCs. So there's your bonus two player variant rules. It works well as well. I had no problem with it. We played it, that's our first two games playing Xyloterra as the PC variant. We still had a lot of fun with it. So it does play two players. Just figured I'd mention that. 